हेलो वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू एवरी वन गैदर्ड हियर आई गेस इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली वी आर ऑल गैदर्ड टूगेदर इन दिस मीट फॉर द ओरिएंटेशन सेशन फॉर एवरी वन हुज अप्लाइड फॉर द क्वालिफायर्स टू एंटर द फाउंडेशन स्टेज इन सेप्टेम्बर वेरी वॉर्म वेलकम ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ आई आई टी मेट्रास एंड ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द ऑनलाइन डिग्री प्रोग्राम Uh, so in this uh, program, we'll walk you through uh, the main things that will come your way uh, as you prepare for the qualifiers and uh, the exam that's going to start. Uh, the new exam is on October 10th, but the four weeks of preparation is very important. Uh, so let me introduce the people on the panel today. I'm uh, Andrew Andrew Thagaraj. I'm a faculty in the Electrical Engineering Department in IIT Madras. Uh, I'm also a coordinator for the online degree program. And uh, with me is uh, Professor Vignesh Puthuvijayan. Let me let him introduce himself. Hi, I'm uh, Vignesh. I'm a faculty in the Department of Biotechnology, so I'm one of the coordinators for the online degree program as well. Okay. Along with us are two students who are uh, currently already in the program. They cleared the qualifiers and all that quite a while back. Let me uh, let them introduce themselves briefly. Let's begin with Gagneet. Over to you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Gagneet Ko. and uh, i'm one of the students of iit program and i have completed six of my courses yet to are um, pending so yeah that's about me good luck good luck with me and siddharth is the other student who's joined hello everyone uh, this is siddharth i'm in my diploma i'm going to enter diploma in the upcoming term i've completed eight courses in the foundation and i'm a student in the itm online degree So I hope this session is insightful for you for you all, and uh, I hope you benefit from this as well. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks, uh, Siddharth. Uh, we also have uh, Bharti with us. Uh, she's uh, she's part of the program, Hi. and she'll talk to you about uh, some of the aspects of the process. Okay, so this is the panel, and uh, so let me share share a few slides that we have for the uh, day, so that uh, we can uh, gather our thoughts. Uh, be clear on what we are talking about. Uh, I'll begin brief with a very brief introduction to the program. Most of you probably know almost everything that I'm going to say in this uh, introductory slide, so I'll go through this uh, very very fast. Uh, the program itself has three levels. You are now uh, applying to enter the foundation level. So there's the qualifier process. We are about to enter that. Uh, it involves four weeks of uh, learning. followed by a qualifier exam so you pass that exam you get into the foundation level and uh, of course if you clear the foundation level like uh, siddharth mentioned you've cleared the foundation level you get into the diploma level uh, there are eight courses to clear in the foundation level then if you clear the diploma level you get into the degree level and there are multiple exits in the middle as well uh, this program has online instruction predominantly and uh, in person quizzes and exams okay so this is the structure of the program and uh, I think I think uh, yeah so a quick uh, look once again to remind you about the entry process entry to the foundation level is through the qualifier exam uh, eligibility is very simple almost anyone who has finished 12th is eligible uh, you have to do one month of learning with us we will teach you online uh, for one month and then you write an exam if you pass the exam you get it okay a few highlights uh, this program is aligned very much with the new education policy and regulations of the government Uh, it is possible from our side as a second degree while still in college uh, uh, however you know we're still awaiting official recognition from the government on this uh, but you know i think as far as industry is concerned this is one of the highest demand areas uh, this is a fantastic uh, opportunity to do uh, programming and data science uh, i just want to convey that there's no issue with the recognition of the degree as such the degree is coming from iit which is very seriously recognized but if you're doing two degrees in parallel Uh, you there is still some regulation that needs to be officially done okay uh, so iit madras as you know is one of the top technical institutes of the country and uh, i believe we are setting a standard for online education in the country with this program and uh, it's going to be a revolutionary new thing okay so let me focus a little bit more on the foundation program there are eight courses in the foundation level and you will be doing the first four courses during the qualifier phase english one maths one statistics one and computational thinking those are the four courses that you will be doing uh, during the computational uh, during the qualifier phase and all four you have to do 
And uh, we will walk you through that in a little bit more of a detail. But once you clear the foundation level, you're ready to get into the diploma level. And that's where you do uh, the meat of the skills that you need to be a successful data scientist and application development uh, professional uh, today in industry. Okay, so and then you have the degree level and so on. Okay, so you must be familiar with this, but nevertheless, uh, let's just put it out there so that you see what's coming up. Okay, uh, here is information that you may not have seen before. Uh, so this is information about the other students who have applied. Okay, so about this says 12,900 this is a little few days old about uh, 14,000 students are, uh, have applied for the qualifier in September. It's a fairly high number out of which uh, you see the split here. There's lots of numbers here since you're trying to enter a data science program. Uh, we want to just sort of show you a lot of data uh, even in the very beginning, right? So in the orientation session so that you get used to seeing a lot of numbers and making inferences. Uh, so the first thing I want to highlight is the you know, look at the age of the students. You have people who are in the 10 to 20, 21 to 30 bracket. A large number of them are there, but we also have students in the 61 to 80 uh, bracket. You know, and it's a pretty wide uh, spread for students. Uh, people from different backgrounds, arts and science is a fairly large number. Engineering technology is the largest number, but it's not uh, really everybody is not an engineer at this program. So and we're very, uh, very happy about that because we've built this program so that anyone can come in and learn uh, programming and data science, okay? And then we have, uh, most people are, most people are interested in the BSc degree from IIT Madras, it's great to see. And uh, about 30% are women, 20, 35% are men. And we have a good split uh, overall across all years. Okay, so, so, so. so there you go. In terms of state-wise distribution, again, every state is represented. Uh, we also have people from uh, UAE, uh, quite a significant number and other countries outside of that as well. Uh, I think uh, Tamil Nadu is the largest number in terms of a single state. And then uh, we have, uh, I think, if I'm not wrong, Maharashtra, Kerala, and UP following right, the next few things. But every state is represented. We have five people from Andaman and Nicobar. Uh, so uh, I think people from Northeast, uh, every, every state is uh, represented. Uh, Uh, so, uh, so, so, okay, so that's information about who has applied and all that. Uh, the next few slides I'm going to spend on, uh, we're going to spend on looking at the process, the qualifier process. Okay, so it's very important uh, that we, uh, you know, focus on this process that's going to come up in the next four weeks. It's a crucial time. I know many of you might be nervous about it, whether you'll do well, you'll be able to follow, you can write exams well or not. Uh, but our qualifier process is designed so that we start from the basics and teach you a bit slowly, but at the same time also challenge you at the appropriate uh, places. Okay, so there are four courses, English one, mathematics one, statistics one, and computational thinking. And the way the course will run is every week videos will be released, a graded assignment will be released, there will be live sessions with instructors, and you can also use discussion forums to raise questions. Okay, so this is what will happen every week. Uh, so you have to be, you have to make sure that you study every week. That's extremely important. It will start on 6th September, uh, four weeks of content, and the exam at the end is on 10th October. Okay, so make, don't don't push everything to the end. Make sure you study every week and uh, make sure you're on top of top of things every week. In fact, for eligible for eligibility to write the exam, you have to submit the assignments. Okay, so that's also an important criteria. So every week, uh, work is expected from you. Okay, and uh, okay, the next few slides describe the portal and what you will see once you log in. Okay, so every course will look like this. This is a page of computational thinking. There is course content, uh, and then the videos will be on the right. It should be reasonably simple. If you've seen enough portals, you'll know where to click to access the course content. Every week, lectures will be released, and uh, along with lectures, you will have things called activity questions. And then there will be practice assignment questions, then there will be graded assignment questions. So all these assignments are extremely important. Uh, one uh, common question that you will get asked, I mean, at, at least we get asked is, I saw the lectures, but the assignments are not solved in the lectures. The questions in the assignments are, look very different from the lectures. So you, you will get this constantly and uh, we are not surprised at all about it. 
that's how we set the assignment questions and activity questions. Okay, so we're not going to simply ask you to repeat what is there in the lecture. Absolutely not. You have to understand what's there in the lecture and use it in a new situation. Okay, so it's a very different type of learning. If you have not done this before, this will challenge you a lot. The first few lectures, you will be upset and angry saying, oh, I, it's not there in the lecture. It's not there in the lecture. It is there. Believe us. Okay, so you read the lecture slowly, understand it. You should apply that idea in the for solving the questions. Okay, so keep this keep the simple pointer in mind. Exactly, we will not ask you to repeat what's in the lecture. You have to understand and apply it in a new situation. Okay, important to understand. Okay. So an important tab in the course page is announcements. Okay, you will see that you will get a lot of emails from us, a lot of announcements from us for every course. It will remind you about content. It will remind you about deadlines. It's easy to miss things that come by email. Okay, when so many emails come, it's easy to miss. So every course has an announcement page also. You go look at the announcement page. There are important instructions and announcements given in the announcement page. And we will expect from the administrative side that you have read every email and you have understood it. Okay, that's what we expect. So if a common thing that happens is people don't read the email, and then they keep asking us questions again and again and again. Our support team does try to answer it, but make sure you read every email, focus on the announcement section and make sure you read everything very, very closely. Okay. A uh, few questions on the submission settings for discussion forum. Can you take over from here maybe? Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point for me to bring in uh, Bharti. Bharti will talk to you from this point on, on a little bit more details on the forum. Yes. Yeah. Hi, good evening. So uh, this is our discussion forum that we have in every course. So you'll have four courses as you start your qualifier, like Prof. Andrew said, it will be Mathematics 1, Statistics 1, English 1, as well as Computational Thinking. So each of these courses will have our discussion forum. And on the forum, you can ask your doubts, you can ask your questions, any other issues or concerns you have, you can raise it there. And there will be a set of instructors assisted by the faculty member who will also answer your questions there. So this is a good way of asking questions when you have the time as you go through the lectures, you can ask and within 24 hours normally, the team will also respond to your doubts or your fellow students who know the answers can also respond to it. So typically this is the way that it works. There's a simple Google Groups that we have embedded into your uh, course page. And uh, here you can change, you can get every uh, message that is put here, the reply that you want as an email into your inbox too. So supposing for ease of uh, checking out the forum posts, you prefer an email uh, setting to be done, you can go to this place called My Membership Settings and you check whether we have by default set it to no email, which means that the posts are not received as email by you, but you can change it to an abridged edition, which means that maybe at the end of the day, you can get all the posts that are there as a single email or maybe every 25, every 50, you can get it, that is a digest. Or every post can be an email. I would definitely not recommend every post as an email. Don't do that setting, which is each email, because you might end up getting 200 or 300 emails in your inbox. A uh, better one would be abridged or digest. But this is the best resource for you. Go through the discussion forum every single day. Maybe the students in this uh, meeting will tell you more about it. But it's invaluable because a lot of doubts you have, your fellow friends also might have. They might have already asked it. There might be answers there. You might want to go through it before you actually ask it. Or some of you might hesitate while thinking that, what if I ask here? What will people think of me? Maybe it's too silly or simple or some such. But somebody else would have asked it. So it would be a good practice to go through this to get your doubts cleared. So this is the discussion forum that you have. The fourth tab is one of the most important tabs. This is called scores at the top. So you have course, you have scores, you have announcements and forum, right? So the scores tab will show you what, you, what marks you get in every weekly graded assignment after the deadline is over. Till the deadline is over, you will not get your marks. It is uh, shown only after the deadline is over. It will show you which ones are submitted and not submitted. This is a good way to keep track of whether you have submitted the requisite assignment or not. So here you can see that we have marked it as not submitted, which means the due date has passed, but you have not submitted it. Those for which the due date is not passed, you can see it as it will show it as due date not passed. And for those you submitted, you will get the marks. The score for every weekly graded assignment is out of 100 by default. So the marks you get will be out of 100 that you're scored against. Okay, this is a calendar. 
in which we put out the timetable for all the live sessions, any other activity sessions that we are doing with the student. This kind of helps you keep track of what all you have to participate in every single day as part of the courses you are registered to. We very strongly urge you that you sync up this calendar with your a regular Gmail calendar that you must be using so that every morning you can open up your calendar. You can see what are my activities for the day. So here you can see on Wednesday 3rd of this month, uh, 10 a.m. it is written that I, it's activity questions for maths course. At 2 p.m. it is activity questions for stats course. That's a discussion that's going to happen. On Thursday, we have a solve with instructor session. Friday, there is a solve with instructor session. So you can see that all the sessions that are lined up for you are put on this calendar. They help you track it so that you don't have to go somewhere else and search for, okay, what am I supposed to do today? What is the program going to give me in terms of interaction? This is an easy way. Also, we will be sending you WhatsApp messages every single day in the morning regarding the sessions for your day because we know that most of you, at least 80-90% of you are probably on WhatsApp and checking messages more frequently there. So we do send you reminders out every day about these sessions that you have to do. There will be reminders about the course content release, there will be reminders about the assignment due date that is coming up and every other thing will come up on your WhatsApp on the phone itself. So look out for the calendar, look out for the announcement section, look out for your WhatsApp messages, I think these should be reminders enough for you to be on track in the course. Okay, uh, content that is released in every single course because you're new to it, you have not yet seen it, we would like to walk you through this. The first most important part that we have in any course are the videos by the faculty members. So this will be video content that they have created explaining the concepts for that particular week. It will normally be around the uh, duration of, I would say, two to two and a half hours, which the faculty would have created, and this will be put out. The second one will be for every video that we have created, there will be at least five to ten follow up questions. So, the way that we suggest you work is watch a video, try out the activity questions so that you know that you've understood what has been said in that particular video. It's an immediate uh, self test or a check to see. Whether you have covered the video properly, you've understood it well. So those are called activity questions in the program. So there'll be a video, then there'll be a set of activity questions. Once uh, this is completed for all the content in a week, so you might typically have, say, if it's two hours and we say that every video is about 15 or 20 minutes, you might have about six to eight videos to watch in one course, in one week, okay? So once you do that and you have done the activity questions, we say that you proceed to do the practice assignment. So what is a practice assignment? A practice assignment is a set of again maybe 10 or 15 questions that we give you based on the entire content of that week. But this practice assignment comes with the answers also being given to you, the solution is given to you so that as you work out, you first work out maybe some problems, you check your answer, maybe they are correct, incorrect, the incorrect ones you can go back and refer to how it has been solved, what is the answer given try it out again. So these are a set of practice uh, assignment, practice questions that we have for you in every week. So that is there. And then the third part, which is the most important, is the graded assignment for the week. These graded assignments will determine the eligibility for you to appear in the qualifier exam. Take it very seriously. Do not miss the deadlines. Keep attempting it and submit all the questions in all four subjects of all four weeks. So we'll come to uh, how this uh, graded assignments will contribute to eligibility, how we calculate the scoring. But this is the most important. So basically the videos, the activity questions and practice assignment will help you prepare for the graded assignment which you'll have to submit. Okay. And then there are tutorial videos that are being prepared. These tutorial videos show more of the working out of the problems, sample problems, explain the concepts in more detail. They try to fill the gaps wherever we think that additional uh, learning might be required by you. So that is tutorial videos. We also have text transcripts for every uh, video that is created and notes also that are being prepared. So I saw some questions already which said that do we have to prepare our notes or will you give us notes? Yes, we'll give you some slides, we'll give you some notes, but at the end of the day, we expect students also to make their own notes in languages that they understand, in the way that they understand, in the way that they think they need to note down references. That should be done by you. So everything will not be given. Yes, we do give you some preparation material, but we also expect that you will uh, make some of these on your own. So that's text transcripts and notes. Reference books will be mentioned in every course. Uh, but we can allow the students to speak on whether these are required or not, probably let them speak about that. 
Then before the uh, qualifier exam, which is to be held on October 10, there will be a mock test. Uh, basically, the graded assignments, we give you 10 days to complete the assignment. So many of you might, you know, uh, leisurely do the questions, take your own sweet time in solving a problem and all that. But when you come to the final qualifier exam, it's going to be four hours, four subjects that you're going to attempt in. So which means that you really have to work on how much time you spend on a problem. So the mock test will be more like that which will help train you to see whether you can complete the uh, questions given for a particular subject within that 45 minutes to an hour, which is what you can spend in the final exam. Uh, discussion forum and live sessions, we've already said, they are there to help you in the learning process. Discussion forum is like a written forum. You uh, write a question, you get a reply again in written form. Live sessions are where the instructors of the course will be doing, uh, will be live. They will be on uh, uh, any online meeting platform. You can also be there. You can ask your questions to them and they will help you to clear their doubts. Okay, there are uh, four types of live sessions that we normally have. I mean, everything is live. It's an online platform where you can participate, but we just categorize it based on the kind of content that we deal with in the live session. So the first one will be on the activity questions, which are based on basically the content that is being offered in the video. So this is the activity questions live session that we call it in the calendar. You would have seen get marked as activity questions live session. So that is this. The second one is solve with instructor. This is a very, very important part of the live session where the instructor will walk you through every step of a problem, ask you to solve it, wait for you to solve it, put in answers, check whether they are fine and guide you through the problem solving, right? So uh, participate in the session, definitely work it out with the instructor. You'll have your fellow friends also uh, being there in the uh, program. You can all sit down and solve problems together. It gives you that kind of an atmosphere. So I would say uh, participate in both of these. The third one is the graded assignment solved with instructor. So once you've finished a graded assignment, say on a Wednesday, the deadline is over. On a Thursday or a Friday, we again walk you through how that assignment was supposed to have been solved. So maybe you made a mistake. The answer was maybe 5.5 and you got a 3.5. You don't know where you went wrong. They walk you through where the mistake could have happened. How do you get to the answer? So that is a graded assignment solved with instructor session that we have. And then finally, we have an open session wherein you can ask any doubts you may have in the content of that particular week. It is not focusing on any particular topic. It's in general for content of that week. So you can ask your questions there too. So these are all live interactive sessions. They have a specific time that we would have mentioned. Duration of these sessions is about two hours per course subject that we have. And we also ensure that these are all staggered. So you will not have at 5 p.m. every day, maths also happening, stats also happening, CT also happening, and you know, get confused on which I should attend. If you see the calendar, very clearly we would have uh, staggered it. They will not overlap with each other. You can plan and you can attend all these live sessions based on your requirement. One more thing, all these live sessions will be streamed on YouTube also. If you miss a live session for any reason, you can go back and watch it on YouTube to get your doubts clarified or to see what was discussed in that particular live session. Okay, you want to take this. So some tips from our side on how you can uh, prepare and uh, do well. Uh, so first thing is you have to watch the videos very carefully and make notes. Okay, so these are things that uh, students don't do. So for instance, you start a video, it will seem like everything is very clear and easy. Okay, so they just go through it very fast and then suddenly when you take the assignment question, you won't know how to solve it. Okay, so you have to go through the video very closely, make sure you understand uh, everything as uh, cleanly as possible. I would suggest doing, taking notes. I don't know if that's the latest thing that students do, but <laughs> I would really suggest uh, taking notes that uh, helps. If you have any questions, you can raise it in the discussion forum and uh, people will uh, help you out. Now, uh, the point three is very important. There are lots of website, websites and other students also sometimes will happily give you the answers, okay? And you will say, okay, why do I have to look at these lectures? Um, I, don't, I don't have time, I'm doing something else. You'll just sim simply take the answers and go put it in the assignments. And uh, you know, you'll, be, you'll keep getting an assignment score. But remember the final exam, you have to write on your own. And you have very little chance of doing that if you've not been following uh, the content properly every week. Okay, so make sure uh, you follow all this uh, very, very closely as well as possible. Uh, so I thought maybe at this time, I should ask uh, the students to come in and uh, you know, may, uh, make remarks on what they think 
are uh, you know good tips for preparing well. So let me talk with uh, start with Gagmeet. Any tips to the students who are preparing for the qualifiers? So um, according to my experience, what I did in qualifier uh, month. So um, let me start with the, let me not start with that because I did a mistake uh, during my qualifier time. So I won't, uh, I will uh, share that experience, but what uh, I would share is that go through the, uh, everything has been shared by Bharti ma'am, like how to, how you should go through the videos and everything. But what actually IIT does is the timeline, what I had seen is, uh, they release the uh, content on Monday, right? And you have a week, uh, complete week content. So what you should do is Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, just keep it for yourself. Solve, uh, go through the video lectures. You have then activity questions uh, uh, with every lecture. Solve that. And then you have practice assignment. Solve that when you have done all the, um, you know, the lectures and activity questions. And then the final is grade assignment. These three days, just give these three days monday tuesday and wednesday to uh, yourself only now on thursday when thursday friday saturday and sunday you will get the live lectures live sessions from instructors that is what is happening from term one and what i have seen is so uh key uh make your notes right uh, in these monday tuesday wednesday make your notes um write down your doubts and then ask uh every doubt uh, with instructors, right? Because, you know, this IITM degree, um, they haven't made it like a one way degree. We, we can interact with instructors um, every time when we have those live sessions. So you have that opportunity to interact with them and solve your doubts at that point, right? So yeah, making notes, what my experience, I make notes. So I'd suggest you to make notes. Yes, because Making notes, what does it do is when you are going through the lectures and you make notes, it gets in your mind. The image of that particular concept is, uh, you know, copied in your mind kind of thing. So whenever you go, I mean, if you have the qualifier exam, so whenever you go through those notes, you have a quick revision of uh, what uh, actually was taught in the lectures and uh, you'll not be, um, you'll not find it difficult to attempt the qualifier. What I did was my mistake, let me tell you, so that you don't do that again. Uh, I mean, not again, but yeah, you don't do that. Uh, when uh, I gave my qualifier, that qualify months, I don't know, there was some situation that I wasn't consistent on these, um, you know, weeks. I watched lectures, I was like, okay, I had to qualify, what's a big deal? But it is a big deal. I mean, you know what, these week, all the four week uh, content, uh, the qualified one, month, so these are the most uh, basic, the easiest of all the content in term one or term two, upcoming terms, right? When I qualified my uh, qualified the qualifier, cleared my qualifier, I was like, okay, so these were the most basic content and I could have scored more because you know, these qualifier marks will be carried on to your final uh, score, total score. And that time I regret I actually regretted that I didn't pay attention that moment. So I would say that be consistent. Consistency is the key to any, any kind of work, any kind of work. So be consistent, keep it week wise and don't just pile up to the last week. It won't help you. The lectures, the concepts are easier. Like they are based on 10th, 11th and 12th. What I saw 10th, 11th and 12th class content, but what is the difference between IIT and the 10th, 11th and 12th, uh, you know, content is that the grade assignment and the practice assignment questions, the questions they provide us. What we see in the uh, IIT level, you know, questions is that uh, we get to know about real life applications. And uh, we actually, the IIT makes us think that you have to, uh, you know, um, use your mind, use your own mind to, uh, you know, that uh, solve the question and get to know what really you will apply you in your real life. So that is what uh, it is the, the difference I, IIT level and the other, you know, uh, school level or college level, you can say. So that's the difference. So 
I mean, you have to use your own mind. As Andrew sir said that, do not just copy your grade assignment questions from other learners who are just providing you solutions. Don't do that. Never do that. I'm saying you this because when you'll uh, solve your qualifier exam on October 10, you have to use your own mind. You have to go through that applications of real life that yes, we have to do like this. So be consistent, solve yourself, make notes. Don't make detailed note, but yeah, at least short notes. And um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. That's my experience. Thank thanks. you. Thanks a lot, Gagni. This was very well detailed uh, prescription on how to succeed. And particularly, I think the point you made about uh, scoring high marks in qualifiers, not just qualifying somehow, but scoring very high marks is useful because this counts yeah. towards your grade and it makes a big difference as you go along. Thanks, uh, thanks, Gagneet. Uh, so let me now uh, call on Siddharth. Uh, Siddharth, would you like to add uh, your side of the story of how you qualified? Uh, thank you, sir. So yeah, my uh, qualifiers did go well. I got a four CCC there. Uh, okay. But let me tell, let me start from the beginning, all right? So we have two types of learners. The first one are students who are parallel doing this degree with another on-campus degree. And then we have working professionals, right? So I think the first four weeks of the qualifier examination will be easy for students who are parallelly doing something on campus because you have been studying for a long time now and the concepts also might be repeating, right? So for the folks there, I don't think uh, qualifiers will be as challenging as you might feel. And that there's, a, there's an advantage there and a disadvantage that I'd like to talk about in a few minutes. And coming to the working professionals, um, they, you will feel that backdrop, you know, been work, you've been start, you studied a long time back and then you worked for another long time and then again, you're going to study. So there will be some hurdles there, but I'm not saying that it won't be smooth. It will be smooth provided we do the work. So let me start, start uh, talk about the students. So first four weeks are going to be easy. As Gagneet said, the first four weeks is, is, is more lightheaded, right? So you can do well, you can do it consistently and you can score well in your qualifiers. There's, there's, Nobody can say that you won't be able to score well in qualifiers, provided you've done your work. But I think the mistake students do is the week one and week two, we do it very seriously. We take it seriously. We do four subjects very seriously. We, we divide, we plan out. And then week three onwards, there is a downward shift. So we take our assignments and everything to the end of the week. So probably on a Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, when you're actually supposed to submit, that is when you hurry, you rush, and then you submit your assignments, right? I think that is a mistake you shouldn't do because I suffered because of that mistake and I don't want people to suffer because of that. The thing is that one very important fact you need to understand, this is not a MOOC. This is an online degree, okay? It is not an MOOC. Usually there's a culture in MOOC where, you know, we have 10 weeks, 10 questions and assignments, write the assignment and then an end exam, okay? So there is a, there's, there's a, you can actually develop Betaji in an MOOC at one point of time if you're not very motivated. But I think in the online degree, you need to be very motivated to do it and not take it as an MOOC because there is, the questions will be tough. Okay, but I'm not saying the questions will be hard. The questions will be tough if you have not put in the right effort. Okay, enjoy the questions. I think every problem should be enjoyable. So you learn something, attempt the problems in such a way that you enjoy doing it. And that is the only way you'll be able to score well. And when you look at it like, okay, I'm going to watch this 20 minutes video, I'll understand something and I have to apply it in a question. I think that will not actually score marks and that is not the actual output here. You need to learn something. You're learning something new throughout the, through the degree. You need to learn something new. And that is what I have done. So that you'll always see that shift in attitude when you do the questions. Okay. So they will, you will find face the problem wherein the videos talk about something else and the questions are uh, very different from it. I think like Andrew sir said, you have to be very cautious in what, when you watch your videos, everything is there in the video. The concepts are there in the video. If you enjoy the sums you do in the activity questions, if you enjoy the sums you do in the practice and the credit, then you wouldn't find it as a burden as such, right? You'll, you'll actually enjoy learning that. So that is something I want to tell. So every course, be it English one, maths one, statistics one, or CT, enjoy everything you do because there's always something new to learn. Now coming to working professionals, there might be a few concepts that you already know, right? You've been, you mastered that particular concept, right? So maybe I wouldn't suggest this highly, but even if you're a student, if you know a particular concept, you can try, I won't recommend it again. You can try probably skipping the video, but attempt the activity questions. If you're not able to get the activity questions, right? You watch the video. Okay. So I'm not uh, promoting the fact you should never watch a video. You should always watch a video. It is important. But if you feel, okay, this concept is something I've learned before, attempt the activity questions. If you're able to do it, then proceed ahead. If you're not, come back to the video. All right. But one tip I can tell here is that 
sometimes a few people might find the video very slow at one speed. So you do have an option of 1.5 and two speed. Okay. <laughs> so that is something I want to tell if even two speed is not enough. You can go to YouTube. The same video will be there. There's an extension in Google Chrome called speed up. So you have a speed until four. Okay, I don't think four is needed, but two two point two five is enough. So yeah, uh, that is for the videos. If you're very if, if when the twenty minutes video is very overwhelming, you can try that. So that is there. But yes, I think like Gagneet said, you can try notes. In fact, uh, I uh, did my examinations only through Gagneet's notes. So there are students who also uh, provide notes. You can try that as well. But yeah, it's it's good to write notes. But I think coming to the examination point of view that I did was I had this flip book. Okay. So it's a tiny 15 rupees flip book. So every week, important points from every week is noted down because when you're driving in the car, when you're traveling to the center, you can just give it a quick look so that you know what you've done. All right. So likewise, if you do your work meticulously, I don't think qualifiers will be that hard. Just enjoy what you're doing. I think you should really like what you do and enjoy the problems that you do. It won't be an issue after all. Okay. So and do involve yourself in the discussion forum. Uh, don't refrain from asking questions because no question is too small. Probably someone else has had the same question like when they might have answered someone else might have answered it. So uh, ask questions, you know, when you ask questions and you keep learning more. So no question is too small. And another thing that Andrew sir pointed was there are answers online. Okay. And there are answers only. That self control will only help you. Okay. Because those answers will not get you your grades. It might probably uh, clear your assignments. But you're not going to qualify based on your assignments. You're going to qualify based on the qualified exam to write on October 10th. Okay. So those points and one mistake that one terrible mistake I made was I'm actually from the statistics background. I'm doing my BSc statistics from Loyola College Chennai. So statistics one, I took it pretty lightly. All right. And that's the biggest mistake I did. I thought, okay, I knew every concept. I, I really did. I didn't know the concepts. I, but I did, the sum, I did the sums as well. I didn't revise well for statistics one and it kind of did affect my grade. It became a 47 there. So don't take things lightly. Okay. Regardless of whether you know it. That's why I don't even if you know, just try skipping a video. If you don't get the activity questions, look at the video. Okay. So never skip out on anything. Never be too overconfident about something because you won't know what's going to happen in the examination, right? And I think one other trick I want to tell you is we have an online calculator that we'll be using for the examination. So probably if, if you've written JE and all, you would be using an online calculator, but yeah, keep practicing with the online calculator. It'll help you a lot, okay? Because uh, you won't be using a physical calculator and you will have a lot of problems to solve in statistics one and maths one. So try using the online calculator to help you a lot in the examination. So pretty much that's it. Yeah, take notes. Notes is important. And uh, discuss, I think, yeah, you can also have study groups or study partners with which you can you can watch the videos. Right? If you feel that, you know, I'm not able to watch the video alone, probably you can, like a teleparty, like Netflix, we have teleparty and all, right? So you can probably teleparty the uh, study videos and then do solve the questions together. This way you will highly, stay highly motivated. So yeah, whatever suits you, it will do the best and, you know, good luck for your qualifiers. And that's it, sir. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Siddharth. Fantastic tips. Uh, I really like the way in which you mentioned about confidence and it's easy to get overconfident, right? When you see some of these lectures, you think, oh, this is so easy. I know this, I know this. I think, uh, yeah, I think pay attention to the activity questions, uh, pay attention to the lectures. And yeah, the online calculator can trip you up. But some of the functions that you may easily use in your physical calculator is, is presented differently in the online calculator. Some people would even argue it presented poorly in the online calculator. So you better practice, uh, you know, working out things in the online calculator because that should not trip you up in the exam. Okay, that is a very important tip uh, that Siddharth gave. Thanks to Gagneet and Siddharth. We'll bring them in a little bit later. Let's uh, proceed with what slides we have. Uh, something on eligibility. These are important things. Uh, anything important, I usually ask Bharti to present. So let me go over to uh, Bharti for eligibility. Yeah, so continuing from why you have to submit the weekly assignments on time, uh, like Siddharth was also saying, not do it on a Wednesday evening, probably, uh, but do it ahead so that you are, uh, you know, ready for uh, writing the qualifier exam. We take the best three out of the first four weeks of graded assignments that you would submit in each subject. And we take the marks, the progress, uh, we showed you the scores tab, right? The marks that you get in that. We take it out of 100, we take the best three out of the four out of 100, we'll average it and we'll see whether it is greater than or equal to 40, 30 or 35 based on whichever category you belong to. In each of the four subjects, you have to clear this particular 
criteria. Even if, even if in one subject, maybe you do well in say stats, English and CT, but in maths you have uh, lesser than 40 and you belong to the general category, you will not be eligible to appear for the qualified exam. You have to clear this criteria given here in each of the subjects. And for this, we consider the weekly graded assignment scores that you will be submitting. So ensure that you do it within the deadline and ensure keep track of your scores, okay, that you are going to clear this comfortably and easily for becoming eligible to write the final exam. And once you have uh, qualified, you go and write the final exam. So the qualifier exam is on October 10th, 2021, which is a Sunday. The exam timing will be 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. It will be a four hour exam. You will have four courses that you will have to appear for. The paper is normally set for about 45 minutes for each subject, but we give you an hour so that you can comfortably finish it, check it, recheck it and so on. So from 4, uh, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. will be the exam duration on October 10th for all of you appearing for this particular qualified exam. So once the you'll be uh, writing the exam for all four subjects again, and then we'll take out that score. And in that, we we'll have to check whether you cross this criteria again. So as you can see for various categories of learners, whether you belong to the general learner category or the SAST PWD or uh, you belong to OBC and CL EWS, the cutoffs are different. But the cutoff, the first column here, minimum required qualifier exam score in each course. In each course, you have to get this particular cutoff and then only you'll be even eligible for the next column that is given here, which is minimum required total qualified exam score. So this is an average of all the four scores we take and you should have cleared it. For instance, say again, you're appearing for four subjects, right? Maybe you are going to do say uh, 70, 90, 93 subjects, but maybe you get a 45 as a general category learner in one subject, which is fine. You have cleared more than 40 in each course, but averaging those four scores, you should get more than 50. So supposing there is a general uh, uh, learner who has gotten 45 in all four subjects, right? You will clear your minimum score required in each course course, but your average will not come more than 50, in which case you will not qualify. So that's the way that this process works. So in each subject minimum should be there, but you should also have the average to be clearing the second column shown here. So that's very important. So we'll take care of it. You want to do this or? They... Yeah. So, uh, so what happens after the qualifier exam, right? So that's uh, that's also important. Hopefully, all of you have done well. You have made it through. Uh, if you make it through, the results will come out. Uh, the results will be declared by October seventeenth. Uh, we are told give a give us a few more days if we are a little bit uh, uh, you know we are delayed for this. Sometimes, very rarely, we get delayed for some unreasonable situation. Mostly, we'll be on time. And so by October seventeenth, you will get your results. And uh, whoever has cleared the qualifiers according to the criteria that we had in the previous slide, uh, you will be eligible to enroll for courses in the foundation level. Now, there is a constraint here. There is something called credit clearing capability, CCC as we call it. Uh, we will use your qualifier exam score. And if that is above 70, okay, then you are allowed to register for four courses in a term. If it is between 50 and 70, you can do only three courses. If it is less than 50, you can do only two courses. Okay, so this is a constraint we put based on how well you have done in your uh, qualifiers. Uh, this is, of course, applies to everybody. All category of learners have the same uh, CCC constraint and you have to do within CCC. So this is, you know, to help you, uh, you know, be successful in the foundation level uh, courses. Okay, so it's an important criteria. CCC is a uh, thing that uh, students obsess over. Uh, they want to make sure they have a CCC of four and do a maximum courses. All of you want to do that, but you know, uh, it's important to do well so that you continue to register for large. They can okay. do less than this. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I think will give you the most important thing. <laughs> CCC only gives you the upper bound. Uh, it does not mean that you are recommended to do the number of courses as per CCC. So you can do courses uh, which are fewer than that. So even if your CCC is four, you can choose to do two or three. The number of courses you register or enroll for in a semester in a term should depend on the time you are willing to put in uh, for this program. So roughly each course takes about 10 hours a week. 
So if you are willing to put in uh, 40 hours a week and you can actually put that commitment, that is when you can take you can take four courses. Even if your CCC is four and you can only dedicate 20 hours, you are better off spending uh, registering for two courses and taking a slower route to uh, finish your foundation level so that you can actually be successful in the courses. There is no point in uh, registering for four courses and not being able to complete them successfully. So uh, we would strongly recommend that you choose the number of courses based on the time commitment that you can make rather than purely based on the CCC. The CCC is just a guideline for the maximum number of courses that you can take. That's a very, very important point. Uh, think about the time you can spend 10 hours per course is a very good number at the foundation level for, uh, for the first part of the foundation level for sure. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so assuming you qualify, uh, there are two ways in which you can uh, continue with the program. Okay. Option one, I think is what most people will go for is to basically continue in the program in the, uh, from October onwards and continue to do courses in the uh, September term itself, okay? So you have to continue, right? After four weeks are over, you write the exam. From the next week onwards, like you write the exam on Sunday, Monday week five will be released, okay? So you have to keep continuing, that's all, right? Results will come only on October 17th, but you have to sort of continue if you're interested in continuing in the same term, okay? So that's the, that's the option I think most people will take up. So we will, declare results only on October 18th, but we expect that you continue week five during that period. You're, you're not going to stop. Okay. And October 18th is when you will know whether you are qualified or not. Of course, unfortunately, if you cannot qualify, uh, you're, uh, you, mean you, you will not be able to continue beyond that point, but if you, you have qualified, then you can actually go ahead and register for those courses in which you are continuing to study in the September term. Of course, CCC is a constraint and uh, your ability to do or do spend time is also an important constraint, uh, but you can carry on in the same term itself if you do this. Okay. Yeah, so this the is common option. confusion that all of them have is, is the qualified content different from the foundational level courses? It's actually just it's weeks. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the qualified content is simply weeks one to four of the foundation level courses. It's part of the course, right? It's like you 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 try one month of our program and then we have an exam and then you, you get to qualify. Okay, so that's how the program is designed. Okay, so it's a very new way of doing the uh, entrance, so to speak. There is no entrance, there's only qualification. Okay. Also, another option which you can exercise if, if uh, you know this term doesn't work out for you, you can simply you know clear the qualifier this time and register for courses only in uh, January. Okay, even if you do that. Uh, your qualifier score will carry over for the January term alone as the quiz one score, as one option for the quiz one score. Okay. So this is possible. So there are two ways. You can either defer to the Jan term for admission, for registration for courses, or you can continue in the uh, September term. Yeah, so just uh, one uh, point, I think it's not emphasized here probably enough, but if you're continuing with the course and say October 18th, you're gonna register for the foundational level courses and continue in the program, October 31st is your second quiz. So like uh, Gagneet was also saying, the qualifier will be counted as quiz one for the courses of this particular term. And 31st October is your quiz two. Quiz three is on November 21st. And your final exams will be on 12th December 2021. So this will be the schedule we'll be following. Details will be available on September 6th when you see your courses. But this is the timeline that you have to be aware of. All these are Sundays. The quiz 2, quiz 3 will be in the afternoon, same 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And final exams on 12 December will be morning 9 a.m. to 12 and 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. So that's something. But make note of the dates. And when you register, please ensure that these dates are clear. I'm already seeing some questions that semester exams might come. I may be busy in professional work or something. We will not be able to change these dates for any other reasons apart from, of course, COVID impacting us. But otherwise, if students have any other, uh, say, commitments, they are unable to attend on these particular dates, we will not have any other alternatives. You will have to go on to the next term if you're missing, based on whichever you miss. You miss one quiz or two quizzes, we take the best two out of three quizzes, so that is fine. It will impact your scores, but it's still okay. But if you don't attempt your final exam, you will not get your course grade. So that's something to keep in mind when you register for the courses and continue with the program too. Okay. All right. 
Thanks for that clarification. It's very important. These dates are uh, you know, there's very very little flexibility in any of these dates. Okay. okay. So uh, there is uh, the possibility. So supposing, for instance, uh, you studied well for the four weeks, and for some reason you're not able to write the exam on October 10th. This can happen to a few students. Uh, if this happens, uh, it's possible for you to do something called a makeup qualifier. Okay. So this applies only for those who are uh, you know who are eligible to write the exam that is they submitted the assignments properly and uh, they were either absent for the exam because of some reason or they wrote the exam and they are unable to clear the uh, exam so they don't get enough marks if this if, so if, if you do not qualify to appear for the exam if you did not submit your graded assignments every week this will not apply for you okay makeup applies only for those who submitted the assignments properly got the hall ticket for the qualifier exam but could not write the exam or they actually wrote and could not make it okay only for those students uh, this is uh, applicable uh, you can do a makeup in the immediate next term that is in the january term uh, you have to pay 50 percent of the fee uh, applicable for your category you don't have to submit the online assignments the next time you try uh, but you have to write the exam again uh, when that uh, happens okay so the next qualifier date will be 30th january 2022 You'll have to write it down. Okay, hope this is uh, clear to people as well. Okay, uh, so this is after you have qualified. Uh, what you should do, how you should plan, etc. Uh, should we spend time on this? Maybe not. No. This is, yeah. Maybe quickly, after real quick. Maybe Vignesh can quickly so, say something, and then we should. Yeah. See again, uh, the emphasis here is there are different paths a student can take, and uh, as you can see, there are uh, ways in which you can complete a program. Within a very short period of time, which would be the fast track, or you can kind of take it at your own pace. Uh, so these are numbers which you don't have to really worry too much about at this point. But the idea is you the number of courses you take will depend on the time you are willing to spend on the program, and you take courses accordingly. So if you can put in the maximum amount of time, you can register for maximum number of courses and try to complete uh, one diploma within four terms even, right? So that would be the fastest pace that you can go for one diploma or within five terms, you complete two diplomas and so on. But uh, if you are going to be, uh, if you want to take it a little slower, you can take it, take even uh, two or three years. Like you can take uh, six or nine terms and then uh, so on. Like, and you can take it as slow as possible. For the BSc degree, the maximum limit is six years. So you can take anywhere between three to six years to complete the entire BSc degree. So you can pace yourself appropriately and uh, each diploma level again there are uh, time limits which are uh, given so all those information are available in the website so you can kind of pace yourself uh, so the idea is to give you flexibility so uh, just because you're taking fewer courses there is not uh, it is not that it is a, so it is a slower pace or like it, it is not to be ashamed of in some way somehow that uh, you know a traditional mindset where we want to finish everything uh, as we register, uh, we have been taught that way, but that's not how this course is designed. This program encourages you to pace yourself and do it at the pace which is appropriate for you. Yeah, that's very important. I think the flexibility is built into the program. You don't have to, you know, ship you out at a predestined date or something like that. You can take your own time and emphasis on learning, right? You have to really learn well. That's what's most important. Okay, so this again emphasizes uh, what you can do. I think 10 hours per course is a good number to keep in mind. This is, of course, after you qualify uh, how to plan your uh, foundation. Okay, a brief word on uh, student life. Uh, we do have a very active uh, student what group. Uh, so I will I will now uh, turn over to, uh, I mean, I'll just briefly introduce what it is and then I'll turn over to the students to uh, describe their experiences of student life in the program. Uh, we divide the students into 12 houses. Uh, these are named after uh, famous forests inside India, and uh, and then within each house there are groups. Uh, houses are people from all across the country, and the groups have people who are in uh, neighboring areas. This, is, of course, after you get into the program, uh, we do this, and there is uh, student group representation. As in, every group has a group leader. Every house has secretaries, deputy secretaries, and there is a, a council of uh, these secretaries. And we are working with the students to create a constitution and you know have a very active student government and the student life is quite active they have a lot of house events cultural. i think even now something is going on if i'm not wrong uh between the students 
So, so let me again bring in uh, Gavneet and Siddharth uh, to talk about student life so that it gives a perspective uh, to you know, new students who are coming in. Uh, you know, who, who wants to go first? Then maybe Gavneet. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Gavneet, maybe you should start first and describe student life. Yeah, so um, the this I'm in Corbett House. So as Andrew sir explained all these things, so I'm from Corbett House and um, I'm from group 94, which is actually a region. Um, I got into group 94 because I chose Dehradun as my exam center. So our uh, groups are divided according to our uh, exam centers, what we choose as our exam center. So what actually this does is uh, when we go for our exam, so there we get to meet our group mates, right? So let me ex um, share my experience of last end term exam, what uh, uh, we did with our uh, group mates. So we met uh, in the break time of two hour, which was between like we had end term exam like nine to 12 and then two hour break and then two to five. So uh, in that time, we had lunch together. We uh, had uh, talks, conversations, and we shared our um, life experiences. What uh, So what actually this is, this actually makes us feel that we are not in, in an online degree, but it makes us feel that, yes, we are enjoying a part of a life of a real college, of a campus college, uh, knowing each other, uh, developing our social circle, most important networking. This helps us uh, grow our network because in this degree, we have a lot of people um, that are from different ages and we get to learn from them because like every group, what I know is divided according to the, uh, there is a ratio of that we have small, um, uh, like um, 18 years and uh, like there is a uh, variation of um, uh, ages. There are uh, elder people also, like uh, we have 28 years, uh, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Our mental, uh, mental is of 50 years. So, yeah. So, what uh, it does is uh, I am actually the secretary of Corbett House. And uh, we have uh, 28 groups under us. And recently, like um, uh, Andrew Sir is sharing the screen, we organized an event, uh, a fest um, on this Independence Day. So this was a four day long fest and we had different types of competitions like debate, painting, coding, poetry. So yeah, and uh, this was mainly after the end term so that um, we could um, give people, give uh, our students time to relax and enjoy what is happening. We actually also had a, um, you know, a movie night. Uh, like every day, four days, we had a, a web series that was based on uh, patriotism. So we, uh, I had a feedback from students that they enjoyed it a lot and they felt that yes, we are somewhere, we are enjoying our, what is not happening in their campus college is happening here, that they are um, able to, you know, uh, interact with each other and enjoy what uh, activities, different kind of activities. Right now, an event is going on in Victus that is organized by other houses. So yeah, this is mainly about the houses. Like, um, and the thing is, every week we have a meeting and uh, we get to know our uh, group mates and our housemates too. So uh, right now in our Corbett house, I have or arranged a set of meetings, which actually people get to know each other and have fun meetings. And, you know, we play games, different types of activities, dumb charades and uh, different kinds of, you know, like truth there, never have I ever different types of things. So from my words, I, I guess you can know, you might be able to judge it that uh, how exciting these houses and these groups are. And this is the best thing, I guess, ever happened in this uh, you know uh, iitm degree because i had i'm not able to you know uh, enjoy the campus life so yeah here this is the best thing for me as a secretary also <laughs> thanks good me so you're saying uh, the more than academics this is what you're enjoying in the, in the <laughs> actually the you know the term break in okay. term break actually. Okay. I mean, yes. So let's hear from Siddharth. Siddharth, are you how active are you in uh, student life? How is your so I am from Nilgiri is 79. I'm the group leader of Nilgiri 79. So yeah, the other reason I said earlier that this online degree is not like an MOOC. 
uh, from the apart from the academics, it's also the cultural side to this. All right. So Dagni did mention a lot about uh, cultural activities and you know all the co-scholastic areas, and definitely you you will network a lot in this program because you know you have working professionals from the industry, and you also have a professional speaker session that happens at most almost every two weeks, I believe, from the IATM side. So they get two speakers, you know, and. Uh, you would talk to them. I mean, they're, they're recorded videos. You, mentioned, you can see them in the YouTube channel as well. So yeah, you get to network with a lot of working professionals and you they, you will develop a lot of friendships here because I myself made a lot of friends through the online degree, be it my group or be it in the center. Like Agneet said, you know, in the examination, probably qualifiers, you will meet a few people. By the time you come to quiz two, you're probably sitting with them and having lunch. So that will be that. So there is a very, very active cultural life. It is not like you're going to study in an online class. It is going to be an online degree with both scholastic and school scholastic well maintained. So, yeah, I think that is student life apart from this thing. But another thing is that apart from culturals, you can also take certain initiatives like clubs and activities. So you can start your own club. You, have the, you can initiate your own club. It can be anything. A poetry club. OK, a, deb a debate club, a quiz club, chess club. We already have those. And it, it it doesn't have to be mainstream club, probably an art and craft club, tailoring club also you can start. So there's a liberty that is that IIT is giving to you. So you can start clubs on your own, regardless of whether you're a GL, you're a mentor, or even a member. So that is that. So there's an active student life. And the other thing is you can also initiate things when I mentioned that, like I chose to help students for, in statistics too, because I'm from the statistics side. So, you know. I started this, uh, you know, we refresher week sessions on my, my, it was an initiative from our house. So an academic activity that we wanted to do. And yeah, we had around 40 to 45 members across the program who did attend it irregularly for seven days and, you know, they benefited out of it. So there is always room to explore in this program. Okay. Both uh, cult cultural and scholastic scholastic. So it won't be like an MOS. It won't be like a, a mainstream degree. It is going to be different and I can promise you that. But also, like, uh, just to add four points to this, not cultural side, but actually academic side. Uh, one thing is the CCC. So definitely, if you have a four CCC, I did with four CCC. I had two terms, four CCC. There will be you need to put a lot of effort in that. Okay, so like Andrew sir said, it is not uh, wrong to do just two or three courses. You know, you choose the time, choose what's comfortable for you, and select that accordingly. Don't be in this motivation to complete the degree in three years. Okay, it will build a lot of pressure because uh, foundation is comparatively much easier compared to dig diploma or degree. So there's something called your CGPA that you will have to maintain. So it is very easy to maintain your CGPA in the first, the foundation levels. Okay, so it, it's even possible to maintain a nine or a ten CGPA across foundation. So Keep that in mind when you're also selecting your CCC because it is important that you're very comfortable when you study this. Okay, because it is not an easy degree. It is going to be hard. It's going to be tricky. So if you're comfortable in doing two courses, go with two courses so that it doesn't affect your GPA later on because diploma and degree are going to be a step higher. All right. So keep that one in mind. And also someone did ask but there was reference books. Do we need to do reference books? You know, the reference book that suggested by the IT Madras. If the for examination from exam examination point of view, I don't think the reference books are much needed. That that's what I feel. But if you're really interested to learn more, okay, because there are certain topics uh, that you restrict them because it's a foundation level. But if you're really interested to learn more about it, then you can go and touch the reference books. Otherwise, for the foundation level, for the examinations point of view, you don't need it. But if you really enjoy learning or you enjoy, you want to learn more, you want to know more, you have the hunger to know more, then go for the reference materials. So yeah, it's a good balance of, you know, academic and cultural life and you will thoroughly enjoy what you do in this degree. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thanks. Thanks, Siddharth. Thanks, Gagneet. Uh, those are very nice words to hear. I think, yeah, build, building building up, uh, you know, uh, people's confidence also to, you know, to speak, interact, have soft skills of a different nature in an online program is uh, one of our big ambitions in this program. And I think we have made a good first step with the houses and groups and we'll keep working on this. Uh, making it better. In fact, uh, there's one other person in the call in the panel. I don't know if she's still there. Kodai should be there. Uh, she specifically interacts with students. Uh, she's very, very active uh, working with student groups and her group will uh, continue to build. Uh, Kodai, would you like to add a few words if you're there? She's not there. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, let me now turn over to Vinesh. <laughs> 
<laughs> to talk about support services. Yeah. Uh, so, see, this program is actually quite uh, well designed, and we have a proper support system for students. Uh, there are uh, financial fee waivers which are inbuilt in the program. Um, so, you would have seen that even for the qualifier exam fees. But for the actual fee, which is being paid, the tuition fee, there is again waivers based on the social and economical backgrounds and the physical challenges a person might have. There are also scholarships based on various criteria. So the scholarships will uh, be advertised as and when they are available and uh, appropriate. Uh, it will be awarded to students appropriately depending on their background, their economical and uh, academic standing. So there will also be uh, placement and internship support. We are trying to work towards it. And uh, this will be given for people who are completing at least two diplomas uh, with us or the degree with us. So uh, like even today I was talking to Professor Andrew and uh, to be honest, the kind of employability you will gain by going through this program, you will get a job without any of our assistance. That's the kind of uh, foundation that is being laid out and the network that is being built for you. And, uh, the kind of uh, knowledge you are going to gain, skills you are going to gain, you will be highly employable and we will be uh, working towards getting you internships and placements uh, based on uh, the interests and how we are, how, to whichever extent possible from our side. And there will also be an administrative support when it comes to uh, course selection, payment, exams, uh, exam related questions, portal related questions, assignments, etc. There is an email uh, dedicated for this. Please send an email to this support at uh, online degree.iitm.ac.in. We will respond to it. Uh, it might take 24 to 48 hours to respond, but uh, we respond to it sincerely and you will get a response from us. Uh, you don't have to panic. So anytime you have a concern, please write to the support email and we will respond. The last point is for after the qualifier. Yeah. So uh, student affairs and activities and wellness support, if you are uh, qualifying and you enter into the program, you are enrolled in the uh, courses. So anytime there are issues which a student might face or they need some other support from us, which is not just technical administrative support, then you can write to student affairs and we will uh, support the students enrolled in the program uh, to the best of our abilities. Okay, a few more things that don't apply, I guess, here. maybe this one you should talk yeah. about. Maybe, maybe. So, uh, so here, as we have been talking about, this is an online program, which means communication is going to happen uh, over online means, whether it is forum or emails or uh, like we might have unofficial WhatsApp groups and so on. Like, uh, different ways of communication are going to happen. So in this uh, electronic forms of communication, you need to maintain uh, the same level of respect uh, and you need to treat people with the respect that you would like to uh, receive. So you need to be courteous. Uh, please be kind to fellow students, support staff, instructors, faculty, and everybody. Well, please make sure that uh, you uh, the communication is happening in a constructive way. There is no point in uh, trying to uh, be argumentative or uh, be rude in a, in these kind of interactions. It will not. It will be counterproductive. So uh, you can avoid pointing out errors or mistakes made by others in public fora. Instead, you can communicate to them privately and people will actually uh, be more receptive to that and uh, if the issues can be resolved. You can write to support staff in case you have concerns, uh, even uh, when you are sending emails to support staff, please remember that there is another person who is reading it from the other side and please be polite and courteous while you are doing that as well. Uh, please understand that this program is quite unique. There is a uh, high level of diversity. So you need to make sure that you respect the diversity and dignity. So people from all age groups, so as uh, Mr. Andrew was presenting, people who are in their teens all the way into their 60s or 70s are, are registered in this program. So you need to understand that uh, different people have different sensitivities and you need to be careful about that. Do not send anything which is offensive or discriminatory. So there are actually laws which are protecting uh, the rights and dignity of people. So these are uh, applicable for communications which are happening on the web as well. So please make sure that you understand this and uh, behave appropriately. This is a professional environment uh, and we would want you to behave as you would do in a professional environment. 
So I, I just want to add to that a couple of things. So, so uh, many of you might have grown up in one town, one city, one state at least, and you may not have been exposed to the kind of diversity that's in this program, not just national, it's international today. So many people from across the world are participating in it. So be very, very, very careful about uh, being sensitive and uh, messages and things that you may routinely forward in your personal WhatsApp groups and all that. Uh, do not do that here. This is uh, professional. So make sure you you uh, you know interact with each other from an academic point of view. Uh, we do want people to interact with each other, but be courteous and kind and helpful. Okay. Very very important. So uh, some of you might be aware of what cyberbullying is, but uh, for other for everyone, it is important to understand that this is something which IIT will not tolerate. So there is strict uh, disciplinary actions will be taken, uh, whether you are uh, enrolled for the qualifiers or you are enrolled in the program, it does not matter. If uh, if in case we find any kind of cyberbullying, serious actions will be taken. So uh, here is a definition for cyberbullying, any kind of aggressive intentional act or behavior which you carry out against an individual or a group through electronic modes of communication is called cyberbullying. If it happens repeatedly and uh, over time against a particular group or a person, that will be dealt with very seriously. So uh, if you resort to repeated aggressive behavior with an intention to humiliate or scare or anger people or shame or target a person, these are all uh, serious crimes. There are actually laws against cyberbullying Please understand that uh, this program takes these actions very seriously and we will uh, take strict actions against uh, stu uh, learners who are actually involved in these kinds of behavior. Here is a list of uh, cyberbullying. This is obviously not exhaustive, but some of them would include uh, spreading lies or posting embarrassing information, uh, circulating uh, memes or uh, targeting people through that, impersonating someone, hacking accounts, sending abusive, threatening messages, or sharing private messages, uh, forwarding it, uh, forwarding pictures which are shared in private to others, or threatening someone uh, with violence or uh, pornography, or stalking someone and sending targeted messages. These are all cyberbullying. With respect to stalking someone, and uh, I would like to emphasize that uh, in case someone is not interested in communicating and they do say that uh, please stop. That is the uh, place where you start. Please do not continue uh, in engaging conversation with them or continuing to contact them through any means. It is uh, that would be considered to be cyberbullying, and it can even come under uh, sexual harassment or other forms of harassment. There are serious uh, consequences. Even there can be criminal uh, action taken against a person who does something like this. So please understand that these are uh, serious offenses in the program and in the society. So please understand that you cannot engage in some of these actions. Okay, so uh, so on that note, I hope everybody has a good academic time in the program and a good uh, personal time as well. And uh, you don't get, uh, you know, you don't face any challenges of any sort. Uh, in case you do, uh, please write to support an online degree and we will get back. Okay, so that's all uh, we wanted to say as uh, from our side uh, in this program. Uh, usually at this point we take questions. Uh, maybe this is a good time I can stop sharing and uh, we can take questions uh, from who was out there and we we'll try and answer as many questions as we can. Uh, so the standard question that we have been answering over the last one year: will there be placement assistance after completing the degree? So this was answered. Uh, there will be placement assistance from. Uh, the point when you finish two diplomas, right? So that's when we start uh, assisting you uh, quite strongly uh, in placements. Uh, we're already working on it. I think the earliest uh, people can finish two diplomas is uh, the May term of 2022, and we've already set in motion uh, some plans. And I think ideally, we would like people to be placed in some form of internships even while they're doing their degree year. So I think that's uh, that's the thinking from our side. Let's see. Let's see how it materializes. Okay, so uh, what kind of hard work is expected from the students to clear the qualifier exam? <laughs> there were lots of good details uh, given by both Gagneet and Siddharth who have actually gone through the qualifier exam and uh, even from our side, uh, I would say regular work every day you spend a few hours on it as opposed to just, you know, postponing everything to the last minute and uh, start 
in with the activity questions. Don't don't just suddenly suddenly jump to the graded questions or something. Activity questions are very important. They basically cover the, the content that's uh, taught. Uh, make sure you start there. Then you go to the practice assignments, and then you will have the solve with instructor sessions. You do all that. If you're comfortable with that, I think in my opinion, qualifier will be a breeze for you. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward. I think, uh, yes, 10 hours a week is what we say, uh, but you know, don't put it as, you know, you, you, you just spread it out over five days, for instance, just two hours uh, per course per week. So, uh, what I would basically say is uh, there is a lot of information provided to you with respect to videos, assignments, uh, quiz, practice questions, uh, activity questions, and so on. As long as you are regular with all aspects of it, and you actually watch the videos, do these problems, uh, submit assignments, and participate in live sessions, that's all that would be required. I think uh, you have been, you will be given the training required as long as you consume the content which is being provided to you in the correct way. in the correct way and in the uh, in a regular fashion, not just one day before the exam or like yeah. plan everything for one day a week. That is not going to work. So as long as you can put in. Um, Time every day and I plan for having said that, uh, given the diversity in the program, I would say different type of students will find it uh, challenging in different ways. I think Siddharth also mentioned that. Uh, I think if you're from, say, an engineering background, uh, then probably you'll find the first four weeks. Uh, I mean, everything you would know already. It'll be like a revision in some sense. Uh, but if you're from an arts background, I think there, are, there may be a few people who are doing BA or something, a BCom, for instance. If you've not looked at this stuff for a long time, uh, then you will need to spend that time. I think these four weeks are crucial for you in multiple ways. You will have to do some reading outside of even what we teach because you know you might have forgotten what you did in your 10th and 11th and 12th, right? So I think if, particularly for people who have been away from academics for a long time, this is not a gentle uh, you know, online course from a high level that you would see in other portals. No, it's not that. This is a rigorous degree program from IIT Madras. So we will teach you everything from foundations. Okay, so you it, it will you will be tested back. It will be like you're back in school sometimes. You know, <laughs> it, it's uh, for the for particularly for the senior folks. Uh, that is something we do. Uh, so 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 it will be challenging in different ways for different people. Different levels of effort will be needed. But it, it cannot be a cost. Yeah. So the times being said are like a ballpark average, average number. It is not that everyone has to put in ten hours and does don't have to put less or more. Yeah. They are just average ballpark ex uh, expectation estimates rather than. Yeah. So uh, I think many students are probably in college and have uh, classes which uh, are go live online. So I think there's some confusion because I'm seeing a couple of questions on that. Will the lectures be recorded or will there be okay. live sessions? What is a live session that we are talking about and what is the video that we're talking about? Okay, so the primary content of the course uh, is through recorded lectures, lectures that are already available, recorded and available. That's the main content of the course. And then, of course, act, all that you can consume anytime you want. Once it's released in your own time, you can consume one o'clock in the night, two o'clock in the night, if you're a night out, you can do that also. Same thing with all the assignment questions. They are all loaded. They are all on the portal. Till before the uh, deadline, you can do it. any time you like. Nothing stops you. Okay. These the, the additional sessions we provide are for additional support. Okay. These live sessions are for additional support. Like uh, Gagneet was mentioning, you make sure in the first three days you watch all the lectures, uh, note down all your doubts. And when the live sessions come, you have to just log in for like five, 10 minutes, ask your question, get it clear, and then you can move on. You know, I mean, you don't need to be there all the time. Of course, you're welcome to be there, uh, but those are just additional support sessions. Uh, it's like office hours or, you know, it's just, just time when our instructors are available for you to come in and ask questions. That's one type of live session. The other type of live session is solve with instructor session. There, our instructors will walk you through problems and how to solve them. Okay. Now, why is this important? Because uh, a lot of students who go to different types of school boards and all that, problem solving is something that is not necessarily emphasized in many school boards. They, 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 most many school boards end up emphasizing just memorizing stuff and reproducing the exam. And uh, our course is very different from that. You need to have practice in hands-on problem solving. And sometimes students get stuck on that. How do you solve a problem, a new problem that you see? Okay, so our solve with instructor sessions are uh, you know help to help you overcome that you know initial bit of hesitation you may have when you see a new problem. 
okay, oh, do I know this? I don't, maybe I don't know this. That, 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 that doubt and surprise you may feel when you see a new problem, you, you will overcome that slowly. You know, believe me, by the time you finish your first four courses, next four courses, you would have totally overcome that. But in the beginning, you need that practice. So we have this. Yeah. So the next question is, uh, there are people who are writing that they might have some exams in this month of qualifier. Can we change the assignment deadlines? Can they submit after the deadline? Can it be made flexible? Unfortunately, the deadlines are not flexible. So the, none of the deadlines. So you can submit ahead of time. So that's the answer that we give to people. Deadline is only the last date. It doesn't mean you can't submit the first day, right? You don't have to submit on the deadline day at all. You can submit the day, like one hour after the assignments are released, you can submit. So from that time, submission is open. So plan accordingly, okay? So if you know ahead of time that on the deadline day, you have another exam, don't don't submit on the same day, right? If you submit ahead of time, make sure you finish this. So since, since that flexibility is there, we are unable to change the deadlines for you. It's, it's a very tight schedule. Uh, we have three terms in a year. You've seen that. It's this very, very tight schedule. There's very little leeway. Uh, we have for it. Yeah. So uh, many of them have asked about this uh, software and hardware requirements that we have now put into the form. And they're asking whether they need it right for the qualifier month, whether they need it for the foundational level, or is there a particular uh, set of courses when we start that they require that? So see what happens is uh, technically maybe for the courses themselves, uh, you don't need it at the foundation level. But what happens is uh, supposing there is a COVID uh, impact, right? Then we switch to uh, online exams sometimes. Okay, uh, this is rare. It may not happen. I think it looks like this term is going to be okay, but you know, you never know, right? So if there is a severe clampdown and uh, we are not able to do uh, exams in centers, we may switch to uh, you know at home exams with remote profit. At that point, you will need some hardware, software type support. So, so I would suggest. Uh, please acquire a, a reasonable uh, you know, desktop plus uh, phone, for instance, and uh, that would be good enough. A desktop is slightly expensive. If you are quite conversant uh, with hardware, uh, a, a Raspberry Pi connected to your TV is uh, quite reasonable. Uh, I think a laptop or a desktop would be good, but you can even do a Raspberry Pi type solution, but you need to be a little bit more conversant with hardware for that. I think but adding to course. that, uh, I actually use a Raspberry Pi for my qualifiers. So until week four for qualifiers, uh, a Raspberry Pi would be sufficient, but I think post to qualifiers, arranging a laptop would be beneficiary. So yeah, okay. that is that. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. I think it's, it's a little bit more work with the Raspberry Pi. If you want to use it with a camera and all that, it's a bit tough. So, uh, yeah, one interesting question probably we did not touch upon this is uh, can NRA students uh, join this course and uh, where all do we conduct exams? How do they participate? So, right now, outside of India, we have exams centers in the UAE, Sharjah, Dubai, and Abu Dhabi. In all Shri. three places, we have uh, in person exams possible. So, people in the UAE can uh, participate as well, exactly like people in India participate. And the same thing holds for uh, Sri Lanka also. In Sri Lanka, this is actually not just for NRIs, it's actually open for any national who is in that place. Uh, same thing holds for Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka, we have centers in Colombo and Jaffna. And in Singapore also, we have a center. Right? So these are the places where we have physical in-person centers where you can go in and write exams. So that's those places are exactly like you were in India, right? So there's no problem. Uh, on top of that, we are providing some limited number of seats for people who are not in these countries also. So this is an activity which, are which we are starting in pilot mode uh, this uh, term onwards. Uh, the catch is you have to write exams in Indian standard time, okay? So wherever you are, uh, the exams will happen in Indian standard time on that particular date. That cannot change given our constraints. So, but, but we are able to give exams for a few people uh, in a remote profit fashion who are outside India. That number is limited. I believe people have applied. Uh, we will see how that works out. Uh, but that's only something we've started now based on requests from uh, several people. We've started this. We can't support too many people in this mode, uh, but it's possible to support as well. So the next question that has come in is, I think I've already answered, but I thought I should read out because somebody who's asked a good question 
could any of our good professors suggest a weekly algorithm to follow for studying for a full time <laughs> student from the degree program? Sort of like sequence of steps we should follow every weekday and weekend to ensure that we are successful. I would be oh very grateful for this <laughs> advice. There, there is no universal algorithm for everybody, but I think the sequence is very clear, right? I think multiple people, including Gagmi, Siddha, Bharti, all of us told you that sequence. Uh, I think Siddharth was a bit of a shortcut, so but let me not do that. <laughs> you start with the watch video, maybe watch it fast if it's something very well known to you, but not otherwise you just watch the video. And then most important critical thing is the activity question, right? If you can comfortably answer the activity question, then I think it means, uh, okay, you're doing fine. You can move to the next step uh, and then finish the video, finish the video, finish the video. Video activity question, video activity question, video activity question. Uh, this itself will take some time. It's, it's not very quick. Okay, so this will take time. Every week, there's about roughly two, two and a half hours of video content. And then there are five, six activity questions per week lecture. So it's, it's, it's quite intense. So you have to go through that. So that's the one sequence. So figure out two hours per day that you can spend. Uh, and then go through one subject after the other in this fashion. And after you're done with all the activity questions for uh, one subject, go into the practice assignment. Okay. So now, uh, should you mix up the courses or should you finish one course after the other? Uh, that depends on your timetable. So I would, if I were you, I would draw a timetable. I would say on this date, this date, this date, I'm doing these courses and simply follow that timetable. Okay. That's my suggestion. I, I don't know if Garnit and Siddharth want to add uh, something. Uh, do you did you have a systematic timetable or do you just do whenever you want? Uh, yeah, I mean, we make timetable. Like I make timetable. I try to follow it. And yeah, because of some situations, sometimes you know occur between uh, some home works and household works and something happens. But yeah, following a timetable, like I said, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, try to complete in that. It is not compulsory to do completely in that way. And yeah, uh, shift of subjects is important in what way? Because sometimes doing a subject completely at a time bores you sometimes. It happens. So uh, doing uh, one hour a day is enough for complete one subject like have uh, or divide like for example on monday do it uh, statistics one and uh, english one and tuesday do it um, maths one and ct uh, then uh, do it four days okay monday tuesday wednesday and thursday this can happen and attend the live sessions on friday saturday and sunday so this is my suggestion I, and from I, my side i think uh, i would say start your week with english one i think take, <laughs> take monday with english one It'll be easy. Complete English one thoroughly. With statistics, maths, and CT, shift. Like Agni said, give it a shift. You know, probably one, two videos from... This is what I would suggest. It might not be applicable for everybody. Everyone is an individual person, and you have your, you know, personal uh, comfort zone, right? So I think what I feel an average in comfort zone would be just shift between subjects, all right? Provided, you know, you're able to remember what... You're able to recollect what you had done earlier. But I think this is not related to the timetable as, as such, but... I think solving, you know, when you're solving problems, uh, do it after 6 p.m. Uh, and when you're watching videos, try to complete it before 6 p.m. Because, you know, uh, for me, it was this way. You know, when you, you, I'm, I was able to solve more problems at night time compared to the morning time. And completing the videos at daytime is much more efficient. So you actually know what is there in the video. Because sometimes there is a possibility you might doze off when it's in the night and watching a video in the night. But problem is it won't happen. Problem is you'll definitely solve in the night time and I can guarantee that. Regardless of whether you're a morning person or evening person. So maybe you can try this. You can probably test test your waters there, try problems in the night and you know watch the videos in the morning. But I specifically wouldn't say two hours, two hours, because you wouldn't know. Sometimes of course if if you if you're completely new to it, it can take four hours also. Right. So do it until you understand. But you know, I think start off with English because you'll be confident in the fact that you've at least submitted one assignment by Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> so this way, there's a psychological benefit also there. So yeah, start off with English, then go with the subject you like, then subject you don't know, and subject you might find hard. I think this should be the pattern that you might have want to study in. So that would be my suggestion. And, and I think I, one thing I did want to point out, I want to tell it in the support thing. Uh, especially in these four weeks, you know, you, you're new to, you know, writing a mail to somebody. We There's a very active support team in the IT Madras online degree. So there might be some technical errors, right? And usually everyone will be facing it. Don't have unnecessary panic, all right? 
because tense students tend to have this unnecessary panic. Oh my God, my portal isn't working. My score isn't getting updated and they immediately write to support and See, the thing is we get the support gets a lot of queries, right? And they have they they make sure that they solve it one by one. And you know, if you if your query isn't solved in 24 48 hours, which it mostly will, don't panic. Don't send another query that my query hasn't been uh, uh, responded back to. So if there is a technical error, it will be mostly for everybody and it will get solved. So you know, don't take the stress of panicking or this my portal isn't my this particular subject marks have not been updated. The grade has not been uh, it's not been updated, so don't take that pressure. That is something the administrative department is handling and I'm handling thoroughly well. So try to focus on the degree as the contents as such. If there is some fault, I mean, there will be, you know, there'll be errors that you cannot control, right? So leave it to the support team. They'll figure it out. So don't unnecessarily panic and waste time there is what I would say. That's another thing I wanted to tell. Thanks, thanks for that. Thanks for being there. That is still Siddharth. <laughs> Thanks for saying that. I think it's 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 challenging to support so many people, particularly with online, right? So many variables change. You know, some people some people say this doesn't work, that doesn't work. It's really a big challenge, and it is right that we have a great team that works very hard on it. And uh, sometimes students get very worried. You know, I mean, they're just so nervous that you know, I'm the only person for whom this is not working. It's never the case. Okay, so we do we do uh, help and support as much as possible. Yeah, so I think uh, following up on what you all said, there is one student who's already started. Assignment and week wise questions are so difficult. Please reduce the level of the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is a question a lot of people ask. Can you reduce the level? Uh, I'm sorry, I think this academic level is set by faculty and there is uh, really nothing you can ask <laughs> on reduction or increase or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there's another question which says, do we have a summer or a winter break or do we study through the year? I think students get like a three to four week break between terms. Is that right? About yeah. roughly about three or four, four weeks break. And uh, except the houses get really active during the break and there'll be one program after the other. Uh, so you, you will you will have a lot of fun during the break as well. And in fact, you will have a lot to catch up on during the break because the next term will start. There is a week zero. <laughs> None of the students mentioned about <laughs> week zero, and there's lots of content in week zero. <laughs> it starts to, I should confess, uh, I don't know, Siddharth went through it already. The week one and two has been moved to week zero. I don't know if you know. So, uh, so uh, yes. zero is. We have already started. <laughs> <laughs> I have stats too now, term two, like term oh, three. So. Okay, all right, good. Yes. So you're experiencing week zero. So, <laughs> so, so you will have a break, but uh, you know, enjoy your break. You, you'll also have something to do with it. Uh, so there are a lot of questions from students who are, I think, uh, their document submission has not been approved. We have asked for resubmission of documents where it's been blurred or it's not clear or maybe some name mismatches are happening, date of birth uh, mismatches are happening. And you all have written that you have uh, sent it back to us or you've asked for corrections and all that. We are handling all these issues. It is all getting sorted one by one, like Siddharth said. We are writing back to you also. Please check your emails. Because we have sent back emails, we have been sending everyday reminders for people whose documents are still not verified or we are waiting from your side. One thing here, nobody is going to be disqualified because of documents not being verified at this stage. So even if your application is not an approved stage, but it is something called a draft stage or it'll say we have resent it back or something like that. Don't worry, your contents will open on Monday and all that. The only thing that will get impacted is two parts. One, if you're applying, say, for an EWS and an OBC NCL certificate, which will get you a marks waiver when the qualifier exam marks are released, which is after October 10. If those documents are not verified till then, we will move you to a general category and score you against it. So nothing to worry there too. And later on, you can resubmit it for the next term uh, to avail maybe some other waivers that are there at that point uh, regarding income or some such like that. Uh, if your documents uh, say you belong to SAST category or the PWD category, you've availed a fee waiver, which is part of the process. And these documents we are not accepting for whatever reason that we have mentioned to you. We will still give you time to pay whatever needs to be paid from the site as fees to make up for it. So in no such case will we not release contents to you. A lot of you have asked, am I a part of the program? Have I been accepted? Is my application accepted? The application will not show an accepted status till all of this is verified from our site. That is there. 
but your application is through if you have filled the form you have submitted documents we have received your payment and the payment we have said that we have received then you are through your contents will start on monday we will release the portal on monday and many of you have asked will i get some other email id login credentials to login on monday no whatever email id you have used to register for the qualifier the same email id you will go on the website you will click on sign in once you sign in your dashboard will open up with the courses and the content that has to be watched that will be september 6 that we will give you access to we've already sent you links to the youtube videos that you could have started watching i think a couple of you have also watched it that's what i see in the feedback here but uh, on september 6 formally the courses will open up within your dashboard from the dashboard you can start accessing the portal like we showed you the uh, course the score the announcements and all that will start coming out so wait for september 6 on september 6 september 7 september 8 and all we will be opening up a few sessions of gmeets again whereby you can reach out to us if you have any issues in connecting through it or not being able to access content we will be available on support for you so don't worry about it anything there we will help you out so don't worry about applications not being uh, filled out so that is a lot of questions that i'm seeing here uh there is a question on maybe uh, projects that you might want to answer they asked about uh, projects that are there whether we have any in the foundational level in the qualifier level. so in the foundation level i guess uh, there are optional projects uh, it comes in stats too for instance there is this extra activities you can do uh, dealing with data and it's completely up to you the bonus marks you will get for it not uh, part of the 100 uh, that you do uh in uh, i think no other course in the foundation level has a project component as such uh but beginning in the diploma level you'll start seeing hands on projects in pretty much every course if not uh, very rarely will a course come without a project uh most courses will have hands on uh, project work uh, you will be evaluated at vivas it, it gets much more intense uh, in the diploma level yes so uh, there is a quick question uh, one or two i'd like to answer uh, some of you have written that you might want to change the uh, city of choice for the exams that are going to happen on october 10 and when can you change it is what you have asked september 6 we will open up the portal again for city change it will be available for probably i think a couple of days the due date will be given there within that period you can change your city if you wish to from what you had actually subscribed say you filled the form in march april may june or whenever and now you want to change your city september 6 we will open up that option you can uh, choose another set of cities for your october 10th exam so that will be there in fact for every exam that we conduct in person up to 4 weeks ahead of it you can keep changing your cities and we will accommodate it after that it becomes a little tricky because across the country in about 110 cities we schedule exams we have to start planning for it we have to give data get the centers and all that so it becomes dicey for us to accommodate too many changes after that we try to accommodate if there are a few but not for all like it can't be in thousands that we are going to uh, do that uh how many offline invigilated exams will be there in every semester we had already clarified it but i'd like to again say it so that people who probably join the youtube uh, session late know this there are going to be there is one qualifier exam on october 10th like we already told you that's the main exam you'll write if you choose to continue uh, with the program in this particular term you will have two more quizzes october 31st november 21st and your final exam will be december 12th so there'll be three quizzes that are in person at centers and one final exam also in person at a center so totally four per term that you will be writing for the subjects that you're choosing the quizzes are best two out of three yeah the best two out of three but of course our recommendation is you do all three so that you get the best two choice not uh, you don't uh, i mean better you don't choose to say that let me do two or some such okay there somebody who says i'm not in whatsapp group and we mentioned that we send updates on whatsapp can we use telegram signal etc for now whatsapp is a service that we are doing because we thought that most students are on it at least traditionally we have only been doing email and sms and so on nobody even probably opens it these days but, so but everything in whatsapp is also on email yeah you will get an email it will be put on announcement it will be there on your calendar there are other modes in which the information will be shared since whatsapp is very accessible that's something that we do but yes the information you will not lose out on it if you're not on whatsapp so that's uh, fine so just an additional thing yes. okay uh there is one query uh, that is coming in there too in fact i think we have already answered but still uh, there is a bio student who has written i took pcb in my 11th and 12th never did maths after 10th 
uh, how am I going to handle this program? There's a commerce student who's written, there's a history student who's written, there is a PhD in uh, sciences who's writing saying, I'm not familiar with this. How will I be able to cope with this program? Do you think that uh, it is for me or should I opt out? Uh, so, so, uh, so several students uh, like this have had success so far. Okay, so uh, I think uh, the students will be able to add more, but we, we are seeing in our uh, list of students who are qualified quite a fair representation for uh, students who have done arts and commerce and who have been in other areas. Uh, we start at the 11th standard, 10th standard, 11th standard level in math 1 and stats 1. We do not assume uh, anything more. Uh, so we start slowly, we build up the foundations. Uh, but if you've been away from math since your 10th standard, you have to put in more time. You have to put in additional effort uh, to pick up uh, that because I mean, you, 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 the, the content will is okay, but you it will it will not be 10 hours per week for math one thing. It will be maybe 15, 16 hours of, of that order. If you can find the time and do well, uh, people have done uh, quite well. In fact, quite a few commerce students, art students have done quite well. In fact, some of them are even topping. If I'm not wrong, some of the courses uh, that we are seeing. So it's, it's, it's a function of how much time you can spend. Uh, yes, indeed, in the first term, you will have to spend more time uh, to catch up with all that you missed in your 11th and 12th. Uh, but we, we are not assuming that you've done 11th and 12th when you do uh, come into our course. So, so it is possible. I would suggest you give it a try. See, the, the way we have done it. Uh, really, one of our main uh, purposes of this course is to reach out to non-engineering students and uh, you know also bring them into the programming data science world, right? So that's one of our key objectives. Uh, so the program is designed for for that purpose, but you have to put in a little bit more effort uh, to make sure you do the foundations. Okay. So there is this uh, question that we've been getting since last year, I think, but I think we need to answer. Which is like, uh, can English not be taken out of the CCC and only the other subjects be put so that we can do English as an expert? So, so here in the qualifier phase, so you qualify and then ask all these questions. We give you more detailed answers uh, on what is possible. <laughs> <and> possible. <laughs> so the rules are what they are, and in changing these kind of rules, you know, it's, it's very complicated here. It goes through some three, four stages of scrutiny before any rule in an academic program of IIT can be changed. So once we put in a rule, we, we change it only very rarely. Uh, so please accept the rules and work with them. A lot of thought has been put in before these rules were framed and uh, it has been done so that the progress in the program is actually going to be in a positive way. So changing these uh, can actually may not be a good idea in many cases. And this has been only one year. So we also would want to see so, Rules are the way they are. The way they are. Yeah. So, so the, the Senate of IIT Madras comprises of all the professors of IIT Madras, and uh, every rule goes through them. So, well, only when the Senate approves, the rule gets uh, functional. So, you can imagine it. It's, we can't keep frivolously changing the rules every time. It doesn't work like that, right? So, we have to put in a lot of thought, present a set of rules, and change it only very rarely. So, we, we will not revisit many of these rules in the program. Okay, so let's end on a positive note. They keep asking, uh, will I get a hard copy of my BSc degree certificate, diploma certificate? When can I come to IIT Madras? <laughs> Is there any opportunity to meet all of you there? So, what do you so, want to take? So, we're working on all of those things. I think COVID is a big uh, factor in all this. Uh, I think we are, looks like we are in the last stage of the pandemic. Maybe another year. I don't know. Pandemic uh, will be over. We, we will. Uh, we will plan more uh, events and all that very carefully from that point on. Uh, so, as such, this is an online program. It's not based out of any campus. Our campus was built at a Madras campus, as many of you know, as a forested campus, and it was, wasn't built for too many people to come in. So, this program was not intended as an on campus program. Uh, but we do have mechanisms for meeting people. Uh, we do have plans for having uh, some interesting events involving the students. And as you progress into the program at the degree level, uh, there may be opportunities for you, uh, for, for people in the program uh, to maybe, you know, uh, uh, you know it will be a bit competitive, I think, but it, there may be a possibility for you to visit campus at that. You know, and, and we're still working on it. It's still very easy. Uh, let's see. Let's see how it proceeds. Yeah, and uh, to close the session, there is somebody who is asking, 
what is my chance of getting into this program and what has been the previous statistics that is there? <laughs> We have had we have had about one third of the people qualify. Okay, so that's been our statistics so far. But about, we would love to have it hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we work very hard to make it as high as possible. You see, you see the support, right? I mean, we really want to support you through the qualifiers and uh, help you qualify. And you, you uh, the rest is uh, really with you. You're not also competing with anybody, right? You just have to cross fifty and you get in. There's no ranking. It's not that if you uh, if somebody else gets in, you don't get in. So you, you can all help each other, work with each other, and uh, you know it, it's built uh, in that fashion. So uh, we hope everybody gets in. But if you want hard numbers, it's about one. Yeah. So we would like to believe that hundred percent of the people who put in the effort have qualified. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what we would like to believe. <laughs> so if you put in the effort, uh, we expect you to qualify. I think that's probably true. I think that's a very true statement. I think uh, what Vignesh said. I think if you put in the effort, there's a very very high chance, about ninety to ninety, ninety to hundred percent chance that you you would get through if you put in the effort. Okay. okay. I think Thanks. Uh, any closing remarks from uh, Garnit and uh, Siddha? Closer. We support for this batch of students, Gagni, that we can extend in the next four weeks when the program starts. Can we plan for something like that as student support? Okay, yeah, from my side, uh, I think from, we can do from that. My... For statistics huh? one, I think I can. For from... statistics one, I'll be able to do that. Uh, and yeah, for CT, I'll be there. Yeah, but and for the qualifier, I think I want for for qualifier students, we can go to open notes and you can look at Gagni's notes. <laughs> Best. Exactly. Okay, it will be very helpful. So yeah, that I, I don't want to say that. <laughs> yeah, I was also about to say that. Like uh, you can refer to my notes if you want. Like, like kind of now they're very popular. Everyone just asks me where are notes are. Yes, <laughs> and I'll if there's any process of helping you know the batch three students this September qualify. I'll be there for CT because I had a good um, hand in CT. So. Okay. So okay. let's plan something from the UHC for these students over the next four weeks, maybe a session a week at least where you can interact and kind of help them student to student in whatever aspects they require guidance. So yes, I think we'll close on that. Yeah, we'll close on that note. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Siddharth. Thanks, Gagni. Thanks to everyone who's joined here. Uh, well, uh, you know, I hope you have a great time during the qualifier session. All the best for the qualifying process. We look forward to having you all as part of the program. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys.